sisters here that are walking to and fro, you are the Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Okay? The good news, Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. Because many of you are walking around with the look of despair and disdain on your face because you have no hope. One of you actually told me when I tried to give you a flyer, get that garbage out of my face. That's how low you have become on this planet Earth. You used to be a great people, but God had reduced you to nothing. That's why you have the look of hopelessness on your faces. Give me Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. At one time we used to be a great people. At one time we used to rule this planet Earth. That's right. Under King David, King Solomon. Now you have become nothing. You have become the face of society. Nothing. Deuteronomy 7 verse 6. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy. Chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people. For what? For thou art an holy people. What makes the Guyanese black man, the Guyanese Amerindian man, holy? When you keep God's commandments. That's right. So you are not keeping God's commandments right now. Therefore, you are called unholy. Read. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. You hear that? So when we come out here and we tell you that Christ is a black man, God is a black man and the disciples are black. Guess what? We should have a line right here. That's the good news of the Bible. But what do we get? You walk by, you make faces, you look at us as a spectacle. Why? Because you've been so destroyed in America. You lost hope. You don't know that the Bible is talking about you. You don't know that the Bible is your book. We are reading your constitution right now. And the many of you just walking on, acting like we don't exist. Come on, read. God has chosen thee to be a special people uh -huh. unto himself above all people. So there's no equality in the Bible. Go ahead and run to your Christian church this weekend and tell your pastor that the Israelites said, the Bible said there's no equality in the Bible. God says that the Guyanese black man is above all people. So these Asians, these so-called white people that are walking right now in Guyana, guess what? God says you are above them. But only when you keep his commandments. Only when you keep his commandments. Give me Isaiah chapter 30 verse 8. So what happened to our people? We're going to read it out of the Bible. What you going to find out? The Bible is a book about your past your present and your future. But some of you are so simple and so docile you can't realize it. Right. You can't realize it that the Bible's talking about you right. because there's a great disconnect between you and the Bible. Come on, Isaiah 30 verse eight. The book of Isaiah chapter 30 verse eight. Sister, if you got a few seconds to spare, listen to the good word of God if you love Jesus. But we know many of you don't love Jesus, that's who you walk by. But if we were some white people dressed up in a nice fancy suit, three-piece suit, telling you stand here for the love of Jesus, we'll have a line of you Negroes right here, probably on your knees right here on the floor. But you walk by because why? We look just like you. That means you hate yourself. You hate yourself, you hate the one true living God. That's right. Come on, Isaiah 30 and 8. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 8. Now go. Write it before them in a table. So who is God speaking to? The Israelites. He says, go and write it before them in a book. What book is he making reference to? The Bible. That's right. God is about to tell you about you. He's about to tell you how rebellious and how stiff-necked you are as a people. Right. That's why we're under the curses of God. Right. That's why you're in this poverty. That's why you are in this poverty. Not the East Indian man, not the Chinese man, not the white man. You black people are in this condition. Why? Because you hate God. You hate the commandments. You hate yep. yourselves. Yep. Come on. Yep. Now go, write it before them in a table, uh -huh. and note it in a book, uh -huh. that it may be before the time to come. You hear that? Meaning the prophecies are going to fulfill. Whether you like it or not, God said we will go into captivity on ships. What happened to the Guyanese man over here? How did you get here? Did you come here by way of Royal Caribbean? Did you take a canoe? Hell no. The white man threw your simple behinds on a boat called a cargo slave ship. Right. Guess what? That's written in the Bible. Right. But many of you don't want to listen. You think the Bible's a white man's book. 
But the, the Bible's not a white man's book. That's right. The white man has misused and misinterpreted your book and, and, and uh, put you in slavery under white man Jesus. All of you have been brainwashed. We come all the way from the states to undo the brainwashing. And what do you do? You walk by, you make fun. Many of you don't even have a question. If I ask you what's your nationality, I'm going to get 10 different answers. What's your nationality? What's your nationality, sister? What's your nationality? You. Huh? Look at y'all. Y'all don't know. Some of y'all acting like y'all got your lips sewn shut. I ask you a question and you can't answer. You know why? Because you don't know the answer. The nationality Guyanese is not found in the Bible. God called you the Israelites. That's right. From the tribe of Asher. That's what he called you. Where the hell are you getting this name Guyanese from? The white man. When he puts shackles on your necks, shackles on your ankles, shackles on your wrists, he called you Guyanese. And you run around there with that title. Not knowing that the Bible's talking about your simple behinds. Not knowing that you are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. Come on. That this is a rebellious people. What did God say about his children? That this is a rebellious people. What did God say about the Guyanese black man? This is a rebellious people. God calls you rebellious. You hate truth. You hate knowledge. You hate the commandments. God says you are a rebellious people. God is speaking about you, black man, right there with the shades. You. God is speaking about you. God says you are a rebellious people. We are all rebellious because we don't want to keep the commandments of God. Like the gentleman that told me to throw the flyer in the garbage. God is going to throw you in the garbage if you don't repent. And he's going to waste you with thermonuclear fire. That's going to be the garbage truck. Huh? What happened to the other races? What do you mean? The conclusion? What's going to happen to them when Christ come back? That's what you mean? No, like you said that black people rebellious. Yes. We ain't, we, ain't, we ain't talking about the other races. We're here to concentrate about you. What did you do with your mother yesterday? What restaurant did you bring her to for Mother's Day? Did you take your mother out yesterday? No, no, no but they food and... You cooked food for her? Let me show you something. Give me Jeremiah 7 verse 14. That's the problem with you people. First give me Colossians 2 and 8 and then Jeremiah 7. That's the problem with you guys and these black people. Everything the white man tells you to do, you do. If he put a plate of feces in front of you, many of y'all will eat it. He gave you religions. He gave you traditions. And you continue therein. Bring it out. Where in the Bible do you read about Mother's Day? Anybody got a clue? I'll give you a hundred US dollars right now out of my pocket. Where in the Bible do you read about Mother's Day? Many of you black men celebrated that. We don't want to hear your mouth. We don't want to, we want to hear what the Bible says. Where in the Bible do you read about Mother's Day? You don't find it in the Bible. That means you've been following white man tradition all along. That's, That's what you've been doing. Colossians 2 verse 8. Bring it out. The book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Guess what? Birthdays is a philosophy and vain deceit. Mother's Day is a philosophy and vain deceit. Easter is a philosophy and vain deceit. Okay? Christmas is a philosophy and vain deceit. Valentine's Day is a philosophy and vain deceit. Christianity! Christianity is a philosophy and vain deceit. Islam is a philosophy and vain deceit. Hinduism is a philosophy and vain deceit. God never gave you that. He gave you laws, statutes, and commandments. Hold your point. He gave you laws, statutes, and commandments, black man. Come on. Listen up. After the tradition of men. What man? What man taught you what you know? You. What man taught you your Guyanese? What man told you to celebrate Mother's Day? What man gave you Christianity? What man? Here, you're on. What's, answer the question. What man? You're guessing? Let me ask you, was it the Chinese man came here and gave you Christianity? When you read in the record books of Guyana, who came here and enslaved the people? Was it the Chinese? Was it the Arab? Or was it the Koreans? The Europeans. There we go. The answer is simple. But many of you have this love for the white man in your mind. You cannot even tell the truth when asked the question. It's hard for you. 
Why? Because the spirit of the white man is standing behind you with a whip in his hand. Many of you are walking around in the spirit of fear, afraid to speak against Christianity, afraid to speak against the wrongdoings of the so-called white man to the children of Israel, which are you so-called Guyanese black people. Read. After the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And, and not after Christ. Mother's Day is of the devil. So guess what? If you celebrated Mother's Day yesterday, you are celebrating the devil. Okay, I'm going to repeat it again. I don't give a damn who gets mad. God says if you celebrated Mother's Day, you are celebrating the devil. Why? Because God never gave you Mother's Day. God gave you Passover. How many of you celebrate that? God gave you the Feast of Tabernacles. How many of you celebrate that? Bring it God up, gave guys. you the seventh day Sabbath. How many of you celebrate that? We don't celebrate that. You know why? Because you haven't been taught to you. Everything that was taught to you was the traditions of men, the traditions of the white man. And you run around and celebrate with the Mother's Day, with all this crap that the white man teach you. And you're too damn scared, you're too damn stupefied and punctified and fried up in your brain to stand up for the word of God. You rather listen to your mother, you rather listen to the pastors in these wicked churches and do what they say. But when God tells you to do something, you close the Bible. Right. You tell us to throw the flies in the garbage. Right. Psalms 94 verse 16, before you get Jeremiah, and then I'm gonna answer your question. Bring it up. Psalm 94 verse 16, because God is not looking for no weak man. God is not looking for no weak black man. God is looking for righteous men, soldiers of the Lord to stand up for his commandments. Bring it up. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 16. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? You hear what God is asking you? What's your name, brother? Wesley? Quincy. My name is Isaac. God is asking you, Quincy. And what's your name? Justine? Huh? Deskin. Deskin and Quincy. God is asking you what? Read it again for Quincy and Deskin. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? You have to be an example to the people, Matthew 5. You know what I want. You have to be that light. You have to be an example for the people. You got to start keeping the commandments. You have to start keeping the commandments of God. The commandments of God is the only thing that's going to help our people. We got to stop breaking the laws of the land. We have to stop breaking the commandments of God. That's the only way we're going to come together as a nation of people. That's why God is asking you, Quincy, in this scheme, who is going to stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Meaning, you got to teach against Christmas. You got to teach against Easter. You got to teach the F against everything that is contrary to the word of God. You got to cast it down, man. Come on. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Oh yeah, verse 16. Verse 16. Let your light so shine before men you hear that? that they may see your good works. In order for men to see your good works, you gotta be doing it. You gotta be keeping the commandments yourself. You have to be that pillar of light. You have to be that example to all the men here. All the men, all the women is dependent on you, Quincy, in this scheme. But when are you gonna stand up and rise up and stand on God's side? That's what he's asking you. You gotta be that light. I'll show you an example. Leviticus 21 verse 5. Let me show you, let me show you an example of God's laws that you're currently breaking right now. That your Christian church never taught you. And it's not your fault. We're not saying it's your fault. But the leaders of the people have failed you. All of these churches in Guyana need to shut down. Every single last one of them. That's right. Okay, even the ones in America, they need to shut down. They've been teaching our people lies. But the name of the name of our congregation is Israel United in Christ. God never gave us a religion. God gave us commandments with the Israelites, the biblical Israelites. And if you stick around and you don't get distracted, I'm gonna prove that for, to you in a minute. Come on. The book of Leviticus, chapter 21, verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So God says don't shave off your beard. If you notice something starting from the gentleman to your far left, all the way to your far right, what do we have in common? We all have beards, hair on our face. But you shave off your hair. Don't, dip, don't um, mar your beard, meaning disfigure it. Let it grow. It doesn't have to grow thick like mine, but don't disfigure your beard. Because our forefathers, they all kept the beard. That was a law. This is a law that God gave us. 
The white man says to be clean shaven, but God calls clean shaven unclean. That's what God says. Read it again for him. Read it again for Quincy. They shall not make baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. God says don't shave off your beard, brother. Grow your beard. It's a badge of honor, manly dignity. Okay, you had a question, Quincy? I know you're itching to ask a question. Ask a question. The Bible that you guys are preaching from. Who was the one that brought it together? There was nothing such like a Bible back then where you guys were talking. But now there's a Bible. Who's responsible for that? Beautiful question. King James authorized the translation of the Bible. He authorized the translation of the Bible. Now my question to you before I expound on that is what does the word Bible mean? It means composition of records. Composition of records. What records? Uh, I guess the books. What book? The books of the Israelites. 147 verse 19. Let me show you something. The composition of records is talking about the Bible. The records of the Israelites. All the way from the book of Genesis to Revelation was written only to the Israelites. God moved the spirit of King James to authorize the translation into a language we can understand. You know why? Because when we came over here on this side of the earth, we were not speaking Hebrew no more. So God allowed the Bible, the composition of records to be translated into the language of our oppressors. So he'll raise up his prophets in the last days as he's done now to come all the way to Diana to wake up the simple of our people in a language you can understand. Because if we were speaking Hebrew, Quincy, you would not be able to understand it. Read the Bible. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 19. He showeth his word unto Jacob. So the word that he showed to Jacob, Jacob is our forefather. His name was Jacob before it was turned to Israel. God said he showed his word unto Jacob. Come on. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Come on. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. So no, the white man did not write the Bible. And no, King James is not a white man. That's right. But that's a totally different topic. It might be too a little too much for your brain. So we're not going to get into that right now. Let's go back to the commandments. God says, do not shave off your beard. You have your beard shaving, Quincy. You too. Okay? Give me numbers now. Give me a book of numbers. This is how you stand up for God. But we know many of you are going to walk away, you laugh, you make fun. We know we, you're going to run back to the Christian church. You're going to run back to that crack, pork chop church of yours and go back to Christianity. Why? Because you love the white man. You reverence his word above God's words. We know that. We know the kind of people we're dealing with. God called you stiff-necked and rebellious. Come on. The book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel. So God is speaking to you, Quincy. Come on. And bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generation. So God says we're supposed to put fringes on our clothes with border of blue. Look, if you notice, starting from the brother to your far left, all the way to the brother in the far right, what do we have in common besides the beard? Look at our shirts. Look at the borders. We have on fringes with borders of blue. This is a dress code. This is supposed to remind us of the laws of God. Right. These are customs that we fell away from. Why? Because we've been following the traditions of men. We've been following the customs of men. Our dress code now is not how we used to dress back in the days. That's right. We have a European dress code. We have a European dress code. Can I prove that? Give me Deuteronomy 28 verse 47. No, we wear, we, we have our Hebrew garments. And of course, we have to get our clothes from the so-called white man. But mentally and spiritually, we have to come up out of that. Eventually, we gotta what? Start making our own clothes, our own garments. Don't run away, Quincy. The word of God is more powerful, is more important than that phone call. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. You hear that? God said he sent your enemies against you. Many of you, you, many of you are simple as hell. I'm going to tell you straight. Y'all walk in here in Diana, y'all think everything is cool and iry like you're free. You are living in pop poverty. 
This is a cesspool of poverty. This is not life. This is not living. You got to hustle. You got to hustle. You got to damn near nag a person to get into your van so you can do taxi. Meanwhile, the East Indian, the Chinese, the white man come in and take all your resources and sell it right back to you. This is not living, you know why? Because you broke the commandments of God. That's right. Slavery is recorded in the Bible. Did you know that, Quincy? You never learned that. Of course you didn't. Because these guys and these pastors ain't teaching you nothing. They ain't teaching you nothing. Come on. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. So who sent the Dutch against you? God. Who sent the Spanish against you? God. Who sent the French against you? God. Who sent the British against you? God. And he calls him your enemies. He called them your enemies. He became a stepfather to you. He became your daddy. God say, now you gotta go to your daddy for everything. Come on. In hunger. In what? In hunger. You want some doubles? You want some roti? You want some curly goat? You gotta go to your enemy. You gotta go to your enemies to buy it. They the ones who what import the food over here into the land. Come on. And in thirst. In what? In thirst! These water bottles right here, what do we have here? What do we have here? We have mine, we have diamond, and we have blue spring water. You make this water? You produce this water in your house? Why not? Isn't this your country, Guyanese, man? You make this water? You produce this in your house? Why not? Why not? You produce this water, Quincy? Can you, can you produce water and give it to your people? Yes or no? I don't want to hear no law, sir. It's a yes or no question. We have a company that produces water. From where? Who owns it? Uh, we have a company that produces water. Who owns it? Guyanese people own the company. Guyanese who? Black people? Guyanese people. They're not black. They're not black, Quincy. Tell me the truth. Because a Chinese man can come to Guyana and marry one of your sisters and have sex with her and get his citizenship and then call himself Guyanese once he obtains that citizenship. Exactly, you're right, Quincy. You're right, you're 100% right. Because in America, guess what? In Texas, I don't produce no water. In New York, he don't produce no water. In Memphis, he don't produce no water. In Guyana, you don't produce any water. If you don't pay your water bill, they shut it off. God is telling you for hunger and thirst, you got to go to your enemies. But some of you are too simple to realize that. That's why you're smiling and you're laughing. Because you know what the Bible is saying is true. And it's condemning you. It's convicting you in your spirit. But it should cause you to change. You should want to change. Who the hell wants to remain in poverty? The other nations come here and walk all over you and you think it's something cool. Come on. And in nakedness. And in what? And in nakedness. Quincy. The shirt on your back, where is it made from? Probably China. Probably China. Can I check? Let me check. Let me check, brother. You my brother. It says made in Indonesia. Not made from Quincy in Guyana. In Guyana. That's a curse. Here, I'll take it. I'll take it to the lowest level. The toilet paper in your house. Who produces that? Can you make can I come to you, Quincy, for toilet paper? So what happens when the other nations cut off the toilet paper? What you going to use after you use the bathroom? Your hand? You your shirt? You just listen. Listen to the Bible. Just Every listen. 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 Lamentations 5. Let me show you something. You can't make water. Water is a natural resource, point C. I'm going to show you. Let me show you what the Bible says. Because at one time, we didn't have to bottle it. The white man bottles it and then sells it to your simple selves. And we got to buy it. Why? Because we're under the curses. Get me Lamentations 5. You're right. At one time, we didn't have to bottle it. Because it was running free. It was in the ground. The white man came and covered it up with the concrete. He put the pipes in. He gets it. He sells it back to you for profit. Get me Lamentations 5. You know what I want. Come on. The book of Lamentations 5, verse 2. Wincy, listen up. We know this is hard for you to receive because you got white man Jesus on the brain. Just listen up. Come on. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Your inheritance is turned to strangers. The land of Israel was for you, black man. That's right. What happened? You were kicked out in 70 AD. And the Romans, the white man came up in there. Now you got bastards in the land calling themselves Judah, calling themselves Benjamin, calling themselves Levi, calling themselves Israelites. But I'm looking at the Israelites right here. Bring it on. And the Israelites calling themselves here, Guyanese, black. Five words. You can't find the name Diane in the Bible. God says your inheritance was turned to strangers. 
even this land that you're in, which is predominantly black, and I was predominantly East Indian. The Chinese are coming here and buying everything, everything. Your inheritance has been turned into strangers. Come on. I want houses to aliens. Yo, what? I want houses to aliens. They call you the illegal immigrants when you come to America, but in all actuality, the white man is the alien. That's right. He's the one that came from the Caucasus Mountains of Georgia, Russia, the caveman, and conquered everything. Come on. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are widows. Come on. We have drunken our water for money. You have drunken your water for money, Quincy. They took your water and bottled it and sell it back to you. Water's a natural resource, Quincy, so you're right. You are 100% right. Our forefathers did not have to bottle water. You said what? Why do you get it? If they took your water, they bought it, sell it back to you, give them back to you, leave it nothing, you just give them the satisfaction to wet your water and destroy. Okay, very good. Just stay there right now. I'm going to give you some water. I'm going to give you the water of God in a minute. Come on, read. We have drunken our water for money. So we are under the curses. That's what I'm trying to show you. But our people are so rebellious to realize that. Go back to Isaiah 30. Start at verse 9. We are a stiff-necked and rebellious people. Come on. Watch the mind. Come here. Come listen to the word of God. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 9. That this is a rebellious people. You hear what God is calling you, Quincy, and all of us? Not just you and me, too. Me too. All of us. We are rebellious people as a nation. The nation of Israel is a rebellious people. You so called blacks. All I should have a line of Negroes here. Not just eight people. But you don't want to hear the word of God. You make fun of it. Come on. Lying children. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. You don't want to hear the law of the Lord. I just read a law, Leviticus 21, verse 5, about you got to grow a beard. Quincy, when you go home, are you going to grow your beard now? See? Put the camera on Quincy. Do it again. Do it again. Shake your head left to right. Do it again. Shake it. Shake it for the camera. That's what you call rebelliousness. This is the epitome of the Negro. When you look up the Negro in the dictionary, you see rebelliousness. That's when we under the curses. How hard is it to grow a beard? God says to grow a beard? Quincy says no. God says for the woman not to dress like a harlot? The woman says no. God said a woman is not supposed to wear pants? We read it, the woman said, nah, I don't want to do that. The Bible says we should not eat pork. We read it, you say, nah, I love my curry pork. May I have some jerk pork? You simple as hell. That's why you're going to get more hurricanes, more storms. And when you get put to death, God is going to laugh at you. When you get put to death, right now. When those thermonuclear missiles hit America and all the islands and you get blown to smithereens, God is going to laugh. Because many of you, you're smiling now. You're simple as you can be. Instead of repenting, you're laughing like it's something funny. But God is going to laugh at you. Remember, God is the one that brings death and life. So continue to laugh. Continue to scorn. Come on. This is a rebellious people. Lying children. God says you're a bunch of liars. Just like your wicked pastors. Your pork chop eating pastors in these Guyanese churches. Every single last one of them should be shut down. They're not teaching you that you're the Israelites. They're not teaching you you have to come back to keeping God's commandments. Right They're not teaching you that Christ is a black man like you. That's why you hate yourselves. That's why you walk around bleaching your skin and wearing hair weaves trying to look like the white woman.
For years I've been walking around saying that I'm a black man. I ain't singing that no more. It's our show, man. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.